In this video, I want to show you how to calculate the break-even point when a company sells multiple types of products or provides multiple different services. So let's take the company Elite University and let's say that they charge different tuition. They charge different tuition to different students based on the student's level of financial need. So we've got students who have no financial need, they get charged $50,000 of tuition, and then students with moderate financial need get charged $20,000, and then students with high financial need only have to pay $10,000 of tuition. And the variable cost per student, let's just assume that it's the same for every type of student. So no matter what your type of need is, it's still $10,000 uh, per student. And then we've got over here what we call the sales mix. And this is very important because if we make some bad assumptions here, our break-even point is going to be wrong. So we're going to assume that there will be 50% of the students will have no financial need and then 40% will have moderate financial need, and then we're gonna assume that 10% have high financial need. This is gonna be important because here's what we're gonna do. If you remember with a regular break-even analysis, we take the fix, uh, if, assuming we wanna do break-even in terms of units, in this case, like how many students we need to, uh, for us to be able to break even, we take the fixed cost, which in this case is $30 million. We're gonna assume there's 30 million in fixed costs for this university. And we would normally divide it by the unit contribution margin. So that would be like the contribution margin. Remember, contribution margin is revenue minus the variable cost uh, per unit when we're talking about the unit contribution margin. So it's like every time we have a student, uh, after we cover the variable cost, how much money is left over to go toward the fixed cost. But because we have multiple types of students here, we're charging multiple different prices, we're, what we're gonna do is we, we can't just have one contribution margin uh, per unit. We're gonna have to take a weighted average. We're gonna take a weighted average. And so that's gonna be dependent on the sales mix, uh, the breakout of what percentage we're gonna have of each type of student, right? And it'd be the same thing if you were selling a physical product. You know, you say, okay, I think I'm gonna sell 50% of this type of product, 40% of this type, and so forth. So. Let's go and we'll say, look, the price here for uh, a student with no financial need is 50,000 minus the variable cost is 40,000. But because we're gonna take a weighted average, what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply that 40,000 by 50% and that's gonna equal $20,000. And then we're gonna take the, the, for the moderate financial need, the 20,000 minus the 10 and we get 10,000. Multiply that by 40%, that's going to give us $4,000. Now, we take the, for the high financial need, 10,000 minus 10,000, well, that's zero. That's zero times 10% equals zero. Now, if we add these up, we get $24,000. $24,000. So now, we're, we're not done. Uh, what this is, is that's our weighted average unit contribution margin okay so we're going to put here 24,000 okay and then in the numerator we've got the 30 million of fixed costs so here's our 30 million so if you if you divide this out you get 1,250 that's our break-even point in terms of the number of students so think about it like this this sales mix is so important because if these numbers, when we're calculating the, the when we're actually calculating the weighted average, we're basing on the assumption that, okay, there's going to be 50% of this type of student, 40% of that, and so forth. If this turns out to be wrong, then it's not going to be 24,000. It's going to be something else. And so, so it's highly dependent on the sales mix. Now, I gave you the break even point in terms of the number of students. But if you wanted to figure out and say, okay, well, I want to know how much revenue do I actually get from each type of student instead of just knowing 1,250 students. Well, one way to do that is to say, okay, there's 1,250 students. How many of them need, had a, no financial need? Well, 50%. 50%. So 1,250 students times 50% would be 625 students would be the ones with no financial need. There'd be 625 with no financial need, and then you multiply that by 50,000 tuition for that amount of students, and that would be for students with no financial need, you would have 31 million, uh, 0.25, 31.25 million 
in revenue for those types of students. So again, assuming this sales mix turned out to be accurate, your break even point in terms of units would be 1,250 students, but in terms of tuition dollars from each group of students, from the no financial need, you'd get 31,250,000 of revenue. From moderate financial need, you'd get 10 million in revenue. And from high financial need, you'd get 1.25 million in revenue. Okay, so this would be like the breakout of for each group of students, how much tuition dollars you would get. And again, this is assuming that this sales mix here is valid. So here would be the breaking point in terms of tuition dollars. And then if you just want to think of total students and not differentiating about the different types, you just have 1,250 students for this university to break even.